Hi everybody, good morning. This is Jean here, Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. I'm working on my block party and we're working on block number eight. Last week we, or last whenever, we were um, concentrating on making our 16 nine patches. If you've done that, awesome. That's going to be going around our center medallion um, and then we're building from there. Now I just wanted to recap um, my little image that I'm going to be making. My quilt that I'm going to be making is in one of my introductory videos. This is the quilt that I'm thinking I'm going to be making as it's evolving. As you know, it's not a set pattern. I'm, I'm going along um, step by step for my, even myself. And I'm thinking I'm quite liking it. I actually had put up um, a piece of batting, like a design board right behind me, and I set out what blocks I have. Now, I have been making sort of prototypes so um, or examples of a quilt block as I go along. So I have a few extra blocks that I'm looking in my actual um, unit here. I'm putting these in my um, pattern up on my design wall just to play around with it. Now I know I've been telling you to make one block of block one, two, three as the weeks go by, but I know quite a few of you are making maybe two or three blocks. And the reason I'm saying this at this point is to, to be a little bit excited if you're doing this setting, if you're doing this layout, is to get your piece of batting or your piece of felt or a felt back tablecloth or your design wall or a piece of insulation, whatever you have, or even on a table if you don't have it, and start setting your blocks out. What I've done is I, I'm going to be making a 24 inch block with a bit of sashing, I think. So then my 16 blocks, my 16 nine patches are going to go around that and then we're adding we're adding um different blocks around those 16 with 12 inch blocks in the corner that they will all have a little bit of sashing i think so that's so the majority right here is coming up okay obviously we have to make our center dresden plate obviously we have to make the four here and at this um at this point we have about seven more for the blocks to come around our nine patch. But to see um, if you're doing this setup, I think, um, again, if you've, done, um, if you've done multiples of a block, you can get a, an idea around, you know, mark sort of a 24 inch square in the middle because we haven't come to that yet. I'm still just concentrating on perfecting some beginner skills, hopefully. Um, but you can sort of have a look Look, see at what maybe your quilt will evolve into. This is my pattern that I'm making. Now, again, as I was saying, we are working on block number eight. And block number eight starts out with a simple four patch. And you're saying, come on, Jean, we've done that. That was block number one. I know how to do a four patch. But we end up with a nine patch. Now, we've done nine patches for block number six and seven. We've done the bow, double bow block and we've done a regular nine patch. This is a, this starts out as a four patch. The important part about block number eight is in the cutting. Okay, we make a four patch, we cut it into four shapes, we rearrange fabric and we come up with this. Now, I have, th this, this may or may not be my final block. I'm doing the tutorial on this fabric, but as a, as an um, example, I was doing, this is K-Facet Fabrics here. I just pulled this sort of a, um, a creamy with the rust and the teal block there. But I had started out making, um, my, pulling from my K-Facet Fabrics. And as you can see, these are my K-Facet Fabrics here. Same exact, same exact um, nine patch that we end up with, starting out with a four patch. Two different fabrics. This is a little bit more bold and a little bit more... Um, contrast as is the block I'm going to be demonstrating these are a little bit more subtle these are my K facet fabrics which I actually may put into my finished quilt because I quite like them if you it's up to you to decide on the um, contrast look you want I'm always saying you need contrast you need contrast you need contrast you may not want that bright bold contrast as this is. I may or may not put this in my finished quilt if it doesn't look good with my other K facet fabrics, even though it's a K facet. This one isn't. Again, if you're doing a scrappy quilt, anything goes. Anything goes. I am working with a specific 
fabric line. So I may or may not stick with that because as it's evolving, it's a scrappy quilt. My, 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 whatever this quilt is, my medallion quilt here. This is scrappy. My neutrals are coming into play, however, for my background of my Dresden plate and my neutrals will be coming into play for my sashing, whatever that may be. I'm still a bit in a quandary as to what my sashing will be. I have to, again, look, put it up on my design board and have a think about it. So anyway, this is the tutorial for our block number eight. The cutting is more important than the stitching. Once you get your four patch, simple four patch, then you have to cut it. And I give you specific instructions on how to cut it. And again, pull whatever fabric, you just need two fabrics. If you wanna go with a high contrast, knock yourself out. This is a little bit more subtle. So this is number eight. Again, we're at the point where you can start almost seeing if you're going to be doing what I'm doing, this, this set out here. If you're going to be doing this, um, or if you are just putting your blocks in you know, a, a nice uh, simple sampler method, you know, some, you know, maybe blocks across and blocks down, like my first two block parties, that's awesome too. This is what I'm doing and it's coming along, it's evolving. So back again, this to see um, on the uh, introductory, one of my introductory videos, you will see this actual diagram and what I'm doing. So we have done six, we have done seven blocks so far, or six blocks, our 16 nine patches, and then we're, we're working away. So I hope you enjoy this block number eight. It's called a disappearing four patch. Have at it. I hope you enjoy it. All right, see ya. Our block at number eight. Um, and as I was showing you in the beginning, you really do need a high contrast fabric. This was one of my blocks that I had made, and I thought, oh, how lovely, that really popped. I then, as, a, as like a test block, which I do, sometimes do, with some of my other fabric. So what I did is I pulled these two lots, and it was too muddy. You see that? I thought, oh, that's a nice high contrast. This is from my K fabrics. To me, it's when I put it together, even though it's contrasting, it wasn't contrasting enough. It looked a little bit muddy to me. So what I've done is I've pulled these fabrics and that is a dark uh, burnt orange with a cream and little burnt orange spot dots. This block that I'm hoping to make that you'll have seen will look like this one, a very high contrast. So I'll put these aside right now. That's the importance of our high contrast. What we're doing is we are making a simple four patch. We're making a simple to begin with a four patch, okay? We did this in block number one and our in cutting instructions for this block, our four patch to turn into a nine patch is this. We're going to be cutting from fabric A and fabric B, the same exact thing. You're cutting two each, four inch squares. Simple, simple, simple. Making our simple four patch. The, the um, not the difficulty, but the skill to make our disappearing four patch is in the cutting to come up with this rather complicated little block. And as you can see, it has a tiny little four patch in the middle, just a tiny little thing. So we're not, we're not, um, we're not cutting out these little squares. But it's the joy of quilting is taking a simple block and transforming it into something else. So whoever invented this, there's a disappearing four patch, which is this one. There's a disappearing nine patch, which is incredibly, looks incredibly difficult. It's all in the cutting. So um, this, this we end up with, the what reason I bought out my three grid is we're going to end up with a nine patch, okay? Now they're not the same size units, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We are ending up with a nine patch, having started out with a four patch, just because of the magic of cutting. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to take, I'm gonna take my design board. I'm not gonna bore you right at this point now because we've done this a million times. I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and you can see that lovely contrast. I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and right now I'm just going to construct my four patch, okay? Pretty side over, pretty side over. Just scratch them together there. You make them, you've cut them really nice. 
sew that seam, and then we're going to sew the center seam. So I'm going to come back having constructed my simple four patch. And then again, the um, skill in this, in this block here, and this block here is in the cutting. So here is my simple nine patch. I've taken it over. I've set my seams. It's beautiful on the back as it is in the front. This is what we're beginning with. Now, um, we are going to have the magic of cutting up this block. Now, I know that as beginners, you will not have the tool that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to use it because I know you don't have one. It is what's called a rotating mat. Now, this one that I have, <laughs> this is my huge, great big redneck rotating mat. <laughs> what I did, what a rotating mat is, it's when you buy it from the store, it's a, a nice sleek little mat that actually rotates, okay? For this skill, you want, that would be a nice thing to have. By all means, you don't have it. I'm not going to use my rotating mat. What I did is I had gotten years ago, I had gotten an old wooden Lazy Susan from the Goodwill, from the thrift store. And then I, it's a big honk and huge, great big thing. And then I got an old road, uh, an old cutting mat that I had had for years. And I actually just traced the circle and I super glued my mat onto here. Now, the purpose of having a rotating mat for a skill like that we're doing right now is what we're going to be doing is we are going to be wanting our fabric to stay really really um, together while we make four cuts the cuts we're going to be making is we're going to be making an inch cut on each side of this seam here okay now the reason that to have a rotating mat would be to do this I would make a cut there I would turn it I would make a cut there I would turn it I would make a cut there my fabric has not shifted one bit. Now, I'm not, you don't have a rotating mat, or if you do, get it out by all means. So I'm gonna put that over to here because most beginners will not have a rotating mat. I'm very short, so this might be a little bit awkward um, because I'm going to be putting, I have a large cutting mat um, from over to here to back over to here. So what I'm going to do, my first thing, hopefully my camera won't get in the way, I'll put it over here, is what we're going to do is you're gonna find your one inch line, you're gonna find your one inch line right here on our ruler. Okay, yeah, our one inch. And we're going to put our one inch line on the seam that we've just sewn. You're gonna put that right on. You're gonna line up from here to there. You're gonna hold your ruler, making sure it's right on that seam. Open your rotary cutter and cut on this side. Close your rotary cutter and then pick this up, okay? If you're doing it this way. Now, I know that I can come over here. I can reach it here. I'm going to put my one inch seam. My fabric hasn't shifted. Having said that, no, it's okay. Nope, it's shifted slightly. You want to keep it together. And then place your ruler carefully on that one inch seam. There it is, right there. Holding it tightly. Open my rotary cutter. And I'm going to make that cut. I'm going to bring that up. Now I'm going to walk around to the other side of my, my mat. And I'm going to put my one inch seam, my one inch ruler line, right on that seam. So as you can see, I've not shifted my fabric whatsoever. Very carefully. It's all in the cutting, this piece, okay? I'm going to lift up my ruler carefully. And then I'm going to put my one inch seam on the last quarter that I haven't cut, the last cut, my one inch seam right there. Hold it tightly, hold the fabric down slowly and make that cut and pick this up. Now, what I'm going to do now, the magic of this block, let me bring it closer, the magic happens here. We're gonna just slightly separate them into nine pieces. Okay, there's our block. Our beautiful block cut up into nine pieces. Now what you're going to do is your top row, you're going to just switch out the large blocks. You're going to put the left over here and the right over there. Okay? Now, what you're going to do with the bottom row is you're going to do the exact same thing. Put the left there, the right there. Okay? The center block, we've made a tiny lovely little four patch without cutting out tiny little pieces of fabric. But what you're gonna do here is you're just going to pick your four patch up and you're just gonna turn it. One turn. And there, 
through my viewfinder, I see a really high contrast, interesting block made out of a simple four patch. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this carefully onto my design board just as it comes off my cutting mat like that without messing up the pieces. This little four patch is right there. And then that, like that. So now, instead of a four patch, we have an interesting little nine patch. I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm just gonna make my nine patch. I know that my machine is all set up because I just, I just did my lovely four patch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be constructing my nine patch. I'm gonna start with the bottom row just as it comes off my design board. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that right here in front of me. I'm going to lift up this pretty side, put that to the pretty side. Now again, there is a way that you could chain piece these, but I'm just doing one block at a time with this week. And again, my needle down, quarter inch seam, very important. This is easy because it's just a vertical seam onto a vertical seam. We do have a little bit of matching on the second row, but I'll come to that. And then I'm just going to pick up this piece, put it there. I do turn it around, scratch it together, find my qu perfect quarter inch. Again, working with such small units, you may be tempted like, oh, I'll just do a, a little bit uh, bigger because, ooh, I'm scared. Don't be. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do with this unit is I'm just going to finger press this seam even though it's to the dark, I'm, I'm uh, into the light, I'm pressing these seams out, I'm pressing the middle seam in and the top seam out so that our seams nest together. Now this center seam here, the center unit of our four patch, of our nine patch here, you having to nest this seam here, okay? We've cut it beautifully, we've sewn it beautifully, so I'm gonna turn this piece over onto our tiny little four patch and again, if you want to use pins, by all means, you can. I'm going to hold that together myself, right there, hopefully. If it's a thread off, it's okay. <laughs> and I'm just going to stitch that little unit, like that. Pinch and pull. For these smaller units, that's nice. And I'm going to, that, that's one, that one goes there. I'm going to figure it out. Um, for these smaller units, as the pieces get a little bit smaller, you may want to shorten your your thread, your um, stitch length, just slightly. And that's the beauty of pinching and pulling, because you don't. If your seam comes unraveled here, there's that one. You don't have um, a lot of seam, <laughs> so. I'm going again, be pressing my seams, these seams inside. Put that back and my top row is configured like that. Again, do everything visually. Put this one over here, simple nine patch, like we did on in block um, six. Last week we did, we made lots of, lots of nine patches or you're in the process of still making nine patches. Oops, I just cut myself. <laughs> oh, I just cut myself. No, it's okay. And then this one. Over to there. Turn it around. Scratch it together. And then again, these seams are going to be pressed out. Now, I am going to go over, I'm going to go over to my ironing board, and I'm going to iron these seams before I do these last two seams. So my finger pressing coming off my machine is pretty good. So I just want to set these seams here. And then from the outside, I want to press them over, set that seam. These top row and the bottom row are going out. My center row, set that seam there. My center row is going in. Okay, maybe I'll turn this over and just nudge that over with the tip of my iron. 
and then turn it over. I can feel it, that the seams are going in. And then iron it. And then the last one, again, my seams are going out. And I can feel that. And just roll them out. Oh, I like that. It's nice and high contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it back on my design board, take it back over to my machine, and do these last two seams. Up my bottom row and my top row. Wait a minute. So I'm going to pick up my bottom row and I'm going to pick up my middle row. And we have to be aware now we are matching and nesting one, two, three seams on this little unit here. Okay, this is where you might want to get a pin. A lot of people pin before the seam and then after the seam and then also in the seam. There's one, one seam, two seams, three seams. I'm going to take my, I'm going to, I'm going to wing it and try to do it without pinning it. <laughs> but by all means, needle down, press your foot down. I can see, I can feel stitched it pretty well and I've sewn it pretty well keeping my quarter inch seam scratching the fabrics together here and then off the beauty of this little block having just evolved from a four patch is that it looks very interesting and looks like wow you did a lot of work there my seams are pretty good I'm going to take my top row I'm going to do the exact same thing pretty side to pretty side I'm going to find, if you've cut it really well and sewn it with your quarter of an inch, your seams should nest and match beautifully. Needle down. Again, we don't backstitch because there's a lot of intersecting seams in, in quilt making. That one. And that one. Um, maybe this one won't work quite as well. I'll see. Again, if it's a thread or two out, don't worry about it. Oh my goodness. Pinch. Pull. There, my block. Oops. <laughs> my block is done. Yeah, it's good. So just as it's come off my machine, you can see that I have to set that seam. And then I'll lift this one up and I'll set this seam here. And then again, my block sort of this one wants to go that way and that one wants to go that way. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spritz. And again, just nudge, beginning of the center, just nudge with the tip of my iron, nudge that seam right up, and then roll that bottom seam right down. Do it on the outside so you don't get any little nasty tucks. And then, there's my lovely, beautiful, flat, interesting block. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Now, let's see if I have my ta-da moment. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, well here goes nothing. Oh, it's a little big. Oh, that's good though. Just a sliver. Just a sliver. So, just a sliver on that side. Well, that's awesome. See that? Just, a, just that little sliver. And that, that side is good. And just a sliver, tiniest sliver. A little phrase, that side's good. And just a tiny little sliver here. And I think, I think I have. What? What do I have, folks? <laughs> I have my tie-dye moment. There you go. Boom. Six and a half inches. Perfect. Oh, so pretty. Love it. So you see the high contrast. Don't mess up. Don't think, oh, that's, that's really contrast. That's really, you know, that's, this is a high contrast. Boom. This is not. You see that? See the importance 
of your contrasting fabrics. I thought I was clever pulling that. Nah, this is what, this is the look I want just for this block. I love my K facets, but for this block, for this type of a thing, I needed that pop. When my blocks are put together, I might even save that and put that in my quilt because it's awesome. Um, but I'll probably, uh, you, you'll be able to see this one more than you will that one. So there's my lovely block number eight. I do hope you love it. Hope you enjoy it. Cut it perfectly. Uh, cut the, your four patch perfectly. And then be real careful cutting this into nine pieces. And there you go. I hope you have your ta-da moment, folks. All right, see ya. Bye.